And I'm Tomer. Welcome to this episode of FTC News. This week, our team visited TC Maker, also known as the Hack Factory, in downtown Minneapolis to learn more about machine tooling and TIG welding. TIG is an acronym for tungsten inert gas and is also known as gas tungsten arc welding. TIG welding produces temperatures up to 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit, yet this concentrated heat can be precisely controlled and directed. When filler metal is used, it is added manually by feeding a tungsten welding rod into the puddle of molten aluminum created by the arc tool. Argon gas is fed into the welded area at the same time, which creates a plasma bubble around the weld. This plasma bubble keeps the weld area clean, which allows for a nice, solid weld. This year, the official game rules have been modified to allow teams to create welded parts for their robots, just like FRC. The LazyBots encourage all teams to learn more about welding by reaching out to the welders in their community. While we were on this field trip, we were very surprised and excited to run into FTC rookie team number 8808, the Ponytail Posse. They were very excited to make the transition from FLL to FTC this year, and we wish them the best of luck on their season. In other news, our 2014 Race for Robots event went fantastic. We co-hosted the 5K Run event with FTC team 7190, the Green Girls from Egan, Minnesota. Members from FTC Team's 7152 Robot Squad from Rochester, Minnesota, FRC Team 3042 Cobot Catalyst from Apple Valley, Minnesota, and FLL Team 139 Crushbots from Egan, Minnesota were all able to attend the event as well. With FRC, FTC, and FLL Robot demonstrations taking place as well as 5K Run, it was a great way to raise awareness for first and some local robotics teams. The event raised money for the Minnesota High Tech Kids Organization as well as FIRST, the Green Girls, and the Lazy Bots. We would like to send a big thank you and a shout out to our sponsors of this event. EP Power Nutrition, Little Caesars Pizza, The Edge, Yotopia, and Brugers for hel helping make this event possible. On the topic of sponsors, we'd also like to send a shout out to Leonardo's Basement for 3D printing the trophies for the Race for Robots event. The LazyBots have been very busy this year using PTC Creo to design several parts of our robot, including these VEX Mechanum wheel adapters, which were also 3D printed by Leonardo's Basement. All of this is made possible by the generous donation of a printer and materials by the Stratasys Company, who is one of the premier sponsors of FTC in Minnesota. If you live in the Twin Cities area, Leonardo's Basement is a great place to get parts printed. You can contact them at their website www.leonardosbasement.org Here in Minnesota, we have over 100 FTC teams registered to compete in the First Tech Challenge competition. This means that in order to reach a state championship, teams must advance from a state qualifier event. The first qualifier in Minnesota is just three weeks away on November 15th and will be, at hel and will be held at Egan High School. The LazyBots are registered to compete at this qualifier and are working very hard to make sure we are ready. Whether your team is competing or not, this qualifier is a great opportunity to get a first look at other teams' robot designs, make some new friends, and get a feel for how this year's challenge will, pe will play out in head-to-head -head competition. The LazyBots look forward to getting back together with our friends from last season and meeting people from some of the new rookie teams. We encourage everyone in Minnesota to attend the event, as it was sure to be a lot of fun. Looks like it's time for our Spotlight on Teams, where we showcase teams that have been going that have been going above and beyond in FIRST. First on our list is Team 5937, Renaissance Robotics from Apopka, Florida. This exceptional team made a competition-ready robot in one weekend as part of the Robot in Three Days Challenge. On behalf of the LazyBots, I would like to applaud your hard work and dedication first. We hope to meet, you, meet up with you someday at an FTC competition. Next on our list is team number 7202 M Fusion from Rockford, Illinois. Last year, this exceptional team had only three members and was also an independent team. On top of that, they were also a rookie team. Despite the odds, their hard work and determination brought them all the way to the FTC Super Regionals competition. With features like a beveled gear drive system, three-second flag raiser, bucket lift system, and advanced sensors, it's no wonder they did so well. Congratulations on last year's season, and we cannot wait to see how you do with this year's FTC Challenge, Cascade Effect. Finally on today's spotlight, we have Team 5157, the metal that moves, for their great tutorial on linear slides. This type of lift system can be utilized in this year's game, but can be difficult for rookie teams to make. It's great that this team created a tutorial 
that teams can use to help understand how they work and how to build them. We think that this is a great example of gracious professionalism and an inspiration to other teams to create other tutorials. Good luck this year. The electrical system of a robot design is one of the most important aspects the teams need to consider. A well-connected system that keeps functioning even during the toughest competition can be the difference between advancing to a state championship or ending your season. On this edition of FTC News, LazyBot's team member Nakoon is going to demonstrate how to use Anderson power pole connectors. Thanks Rachel. So we're going to be talking about Anderson power poles today. They're easier for managing the electrical devices on your robot because you can easily connect them and it's easier and more efficient. So you can get them on many websites like Amazon, eBay, and many other places. Just do a Google search. So you're pretty much going to get these when you get them. So when you get Anderson power poles online or wherever you're going to get them, they come with two ends. They can either be fused together already or they can come in separated pieces like these. So, when you have them, the way you put them together is first you go into the pl plug-in side versus the other side. And then you have the rectangular solid part on the bottom. And the black must always be on the right. And then you just put them together. And there you have it. So next what you'll need is a wire, like this. And you'll need to strip the wire. This one. Yeah. And it'll you'll probably use the sixteen. for stripping the wire and you need to split the power the wire like this on both sides next you'll need to strip the wire this doesn't need to be too much just some Okay, and then you'll need to twist these to make them all together. Now you get the, oh yeah, and you also probably will need to fold it like in half, like at the center. It makes it easier for connecting it to the wire or the metal. Next we're going to use these. Okay, so you see these, they have like a curve, sort of shaped like this. So you need an Anderson power pull crimper. You put it in so that the curved part is facing down. So like the curved part I was talking about earlier. And you want to make it so that it just slides in there while it's facing down. See, it needs to be facing downward. Okay, and then you just put the wire that you need, only one, make sure that none other are going in, and then you just press it together, like that, and let go, and there you have it. And you have to do it with the other one too. Like this, make sure that they're both facing the same way. And there you go. So now that we have this, make sure that you have red wire going into red part and the black wire going into black part. Make sure that you're not on the plug-in side, but the other side. And then what you want to do is face it so that these parts on the plug-in side are away from you. 
Then what you want to do is face it so that it's like this with the red part, this part sticking like away on the other side from where you are. And then you need to use some small tool like this or this or such and push it down so that you hear that clicking noise. And then the same for this one. And there you have it. Back to you, Rick. Thanks, Nick. That's great information. Now it's time for a check on some official rulings by the FTC Game Design Committee. One of the most important rulings teams need to be aware of has to do with their rolling goals this year. The GDC has ruled in several posts on the FTC forum that pushing, pulling, grabbing, grasping, and encircling or supporting the clear plastic portion of the rolling goal is prohibited and will result in a penalty. Post number 82 under the game rules and gameplay forum also recently ruled that grasping the bottom inch of the ball tube, which is actually not clear and is part of the base, is also prohibited and will result in a penalty. Please make sure that your team reads all the posts for more specific details, but the bottom line is Robots may only touch the base of the rolling goal. The GDC has also ruled this year that high traction wheels some teams used last year will not be allowed for the 2014-2015 FTC season. In addition, high traction treads that can be applied to the outer edge of wheels is also not legal. The reason for this restriction is that if a robot using this type of tread loses connectivity with the field control system and runs into a stationary object, the wheels could continue to spin, causing damage to the foam surface of the field. That's all we have for this episode of FTC News. If your team would like to be featured on our show, send us an email and let us know what you're up to. Our email address is lazybots at gmail.com and be sure to check our website at www.lazybots.com for lots of information about our team. Until next time, I'm Tomer. And I'm Rachel. Thank you for watching FTC News. Make sure to like and subscribe.